Okay, let's try it together. One, two, three, four, one, two. It's going to be at least that fast. I remember my first violin and practicing in my living room. So I would have been three. And I remember um, just playing little songs, like all the same kind of songs I teach my students now. My father became an, a professional pianist and pr professor and teacher of piano and piano pedagogy, but he had no musical background in his family. So my mother's side was where kind of the, the historical musicians come from. My mother and my aunt both are professional level flute and piano players, but their father raised his family, supported his family as a professional violinist. And he toured all over the country, um, and joined some very big orchestras and went off to war. He came back and then he became a recording artist. He is on all kinds of recordings, movies, um, people like Billie Holiday and Tony Bennett and um, gosh, tons of people, everybody who was recording in the 60s and 70s. I would say that in my mother's family, being a musician was very respected and it was thought of as kind of a, a legacy of him. Since my father was a piano professor, I and I was from this musical background, I knew that even if I played in orchestras and I was an orchestral musician and that was my lofty goal, I knew that I would teach as well. I competed in high school. I, I competed a lot in one competitions. So I had no problem going to college and getting a mu music performance degree at Indiana University, but I took a lot of classes in teaching. And at one point I, was an assistant teacher teaching other music students how to teach violin, if that makes sense. And that was easy and I really liked it. I liked teaching. So the month after I graduated from University of Michigan, I got married and moved to New York and uh, had my very first students. I just started teaching. So I started driving around teaching private students then. And I thought, this is awesome. I could do this forever. So. That was 27 years ago. <laughs> All classical musicians eventually want to play in Carnegie Hall, so in New York City. So I was able to do that and record there. So even though the violin is the instrument that I, my whole persona is related to, I would actually say the piano is my favorite instrument. Oh. <laughs> I love the way the piano sounds. After 25 years of teaching violin, I love how you don't have to constantly tune a piano to sound good. In the closet there, I have a lot of violins. I have a viola. Ukulele, I teach, um, you know, ukulele, recorder. Um, I'm next is guitar. I'm going to try guitar. Also, some uh, percussion instruments I have to play for, for my general music classes. In the current generation of superstar violinists, Hilary Hahn is somebody who I love the way she sounds and I, I love that she's. She represents this whole generation of women violinists because from the time I was a child, violins, violin sections were almost completely male. And now they're almost completely female. So I've kind of lived through this revolution in the orchestra. <laughs> well, classical music is, I don't know if it's completely dying, but it's, it's faded out so much over the past hundred years. So I know my students are not coming to me because they want to be the next um, Hilary Hahn. You know, they don't want to be the next famous violinist. Down. Good. 
but I do want them to be the kind of people that listen to music for the rest of their life and that maybe go to concerts, uh, maybe try going to hear different kinds of music than they would otherwise if they hadn't had some sort of classical music background. I do feel like instilling kind of a lifelong um, interest in music and, and uh, seeing that they truly enjoy music, that they genuinely um, relax when they're playing or listening to music, that's really important. <laughs>